have Lee Brown from Groupon here. It's a real treat. These guys are in a, in a demand that you would not believe. Uh, very hard to get them here. And Naveen Salvaduri, uh, co-founder of Foursquare, two of the hottest companies in the sort of new generation of shopper marketing um, that, you know, in the marketplace today. And um, I think as Dave Calhoun suggested yesterday, um, you know, social uh, is a game changer. And today we're going to, uh, we have half an hour to talk about, you know, how they're going to change the game and who are they. Um, I don't think they get to speak for researchers very often. <laughs> so we're just going to go right out of the gate and um, ask each of, uh, each of them in turn to sort of talk about, uh, orient you to what is the business model. I think, of course, you all have heard of Groupon, but not everyone knows how Foursquare works. Um, so talk about your uh, business models, uh, whoever wants to go first. Sure, I'll, I'll be happy to go first. Um, we, are, we started about two years ago um, as a hyper-local company serving local deals in Chicago. And currently today we serve um, close to 80 million customers worldwide, a local deal, um, through a subscription-based email product. We're diversifying that product here shortly, which I think Ted will get into later on some of our model changes and some of the things that we see coming in our business. But we offer a daily deal to our subscribers on a daily basis, and it provides usually somewhere between 50 and 90% off in a product, something to buy, something to eat, something to do within their local community. And uh, we serve that to over 500 markets in 45 countries and close to 80 million people every single day. Um, sure, so Foursquare started um, exactly two years ago, March of 2009, um, with the idea that you know, we wanted to build mobile software that would make it easier for us to go out and discover our cities and um, share experiences and recommendations with our friends um, and just get better at knowing about where to go, what interesting things to go do, and um, um, experience your world in a different way. So we're now up to almost 8 million users. Um, we have, um, the, so the model is basically, you, you go out and you announce yourself by checking into various locations. So um, you know, we're at the Marriott right now. I would check in, and then all of my friends would know that I'm you know, currently here. Um, and, the, and the system is built so that it can push you recommendations or tips or specials or any of these things your way as soon as it knows where you are. So as soon as I check in here, it could potentially push me a deal or a special that says, um, you know, across the street is a, is a lunch special. Um, and if you bring three of your friends over, um, you know, you get 50% off. The entire party gets 50% off. Um, so um, part of our goal is to build a great social utility to bring people together and to bring um, recommendations from your friends and to bring this very social experience on top of the real world. But the other part is also to connect with local businesses and to give these businesses all around the world a great way to reach back out to their customers, a great way to reach back out to um, their, their most loyal people or to reach out to newcomers to try to get them to come into the store more often. Um, and and this, this hybrid is what we're trying to build towards. Yeah, that's terrific. Now, I guess it goes without saying, um, or at least we all assume, that um, if to, to achieve the kind of explosive growth that you guys have achieved, you have to be doing something that really delights consumers, that is just cool and fun and interesting and productive. Um, so can you sort of just, you know, why is it people love you so much? What, to what do you attribute this fantastic uh, growth also? Why don't you, why don't you... Sure, I think um, a few things that we're working on within our business. First, the curation of the inventory or the deals that we're presenting to our customers. We like them to have that serendipitous find of something local in their, in their neighborhood that they didn't know about or they wouldn't normally do. Um, our customer service is world class. I think that uh, the group on promise that we have that's on our website. Um, it's first class in, in terms of customer service. So if you do have a bad experience or if something is anything, if anything is confusing, you can call them and we'll resolve immediately for you. Um, and the the trust that we've built, that the consumers know that when they open up their Groupon on a daily basis, that they're going to get something that's best in the marketplace, a very um, qu high quality deal, and that's something that's local to them. As we get better at segmenting out our offers and being able to present to them more and more of what they like based on what they've seen, what they've opened, what they've purchased, where they are, um, we think that the activation and engagement rate will even go up further. Cool. Uh, Naveen? Um, in our case, I think it's, it's a whole bunch of things, but I think the, 
Um, the core is that Foursquare is very fun to use, and you'll hear this a lot from a lot of our users. Um, it's a service that obviously, at the core level, you announce to your friends where you are, but uh, we've also wrapped it in some other mechanics. So we, we have this um, idea of uh, game mechanics that are overlaid on top of the entire service. So at the very core, it's a social utility. You see where your buddies are. You see recommendations from them. And then we've wrapped this other layer of uh, this virtual game on top of everything. So um, <clears throat> this is basically trying to answer the question. You know, if, we, if we were to award points and badges and, and make this very playful, would, act, would we actually be able to get people to go and try these new things in, in order to get higher up on the leaderboard? Um, so for instance, if we were to build a virtual badge for, uh, that we'd award, award someone for going to uh, 20 different pizza places in New York. You know, we always talk about how New York is the pizza capital of the world, how we like to explore New York, how we know a lot about pizza here. Um, but in reality, maybe we've been to only one or two in our lives, uh, or in the last year. So um, part of the question, or part of the goal of Foursquare is, can we use game theory to try to get people to go and try more places? And people really um, have fallen in love with this idea, and they really um, use it to compete against their friends, they use it to compete against themselves, they use it to get better at what they're doing. Um, and the playful nature also makes it very easy to talk about. Um, so I'm sure you've seen on Twitter and you've seen uh, your, your friends kind of brag about this. So uh, the idea of mayorships, for instance, if you're the, if you're the person to, that goes to the, uh, a place the most often, you automatically get awarded this virtual title of mayor. You're mayor of that location, you're mayor of the Mar Mar Marriott Marquis. Um, and people just really like talking about this. People like talking about it with their friends. They like bragging about it with their friends. They like to show off on Twitter that they're the mayor here. Um, um, and, and the service just naturally lends itself to being talked about in this way, in this very social, in this very shareable way. Um, in fact, the, the first deals and the specials that actually came into the system uh, didn't actually come through, our, come through our service, because back then it was uh, you know, April or May 2009, just me and Dennis just doing everything. We hadn't actually built in the special system. But what businesses actually did, bars would actually advertise, or they're right on their chalkboard outside or the, on the wall behind the bar, and they would say, hey, if you're the mayor here, your appetizer is free or your first round of drinks are free. So they were, they fell in love with this idea too. They, they were the first to actually take this and, um, and start talking about it in that way. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, let's move quickly um, to, sure. um, you know, the other players here are the retail marketers. Um, uh, you must be doing something that makes them happy. Um, what sorts of, you know, if I'm a retailer, uh, what kinds of um, mar marketing objectives do your, do your systems um, help, re you know, resolve or, you know, approach? So I think uh, our platform was one of the first that enabled the offline retailer to participate in online commerce. So the offline local retailer, the local merchant, the local boutique in your neighborhood, that, nest, that maybe didn't have a website, that didn't buy keywords to drive traffic, to e-commerce enable a destination, we enabled that ability for them to participate in this channel and to send customers and to drive qualified trials, to drive introduction, and to drive brand awareness within their local community. At a national scale, we have the ability to work with national retailers and think about new store openings, think about um, you know, boosting store value cards, um, thinking about um, new product extensions or moving traffic even within store. We have uh, retailers that talk to us, wow, they come in every single weekend, but they only go to our grocery section. They never go down our fashion, they never look at our electronics, they never look at anything else within store. So is there ability for us to segment out and offer those people that are already existing com customers an opportunity to go down another aisle? And that seems to be really, really appealing to some of the retailers that we're talking to. Yeah, sounds like an offer machine. <laughs> Um, Naveen, how about the same question? For yeah, we, we, have, we have similar effects in place. Um, I always like to say that the Foursquare platform, as far as merchants are concerned, enables the same even playing field, whether you're a big national retailer or just a local mom and pop shop that you're, um, you know, that you're trying to get more awareness of in your neighborhood. So it works equally well on, on, both, on both levels. Um, and over the last couple of years, we've been really able to think a lot about what, we listen to a lot about what users want, uh, but more importantly, also businesses. And we've, uh, we've built out over the last six months or so even better tools around deals and specials. So businesses will be able to really tailor how they want these things to be perceived by their users um, and really tailor the experience for um, all sorts of users, whether you're the first time customer that comes in or whether you are, uh, have been coming in there for you know, 50 times the last year. Um, and the overall goals of the platform are really not just to drive awareness of who you are and what you do, but also to um, you know, um, 
get a better understanding and a better uh, platform for rewarding loyalty. Um, and that's something that we really talk a lot about. It's uh, the platform, you know, brings people back into your business over and over again. The platform really um, enables users to show off how much they like your coffee shop. Um, and that plays in both in the game side of things as well as the business side of things. Yeah. Um, so if, if you take this, you know, the, the ideas and you think about retail more in a macro sense, going back to what uh, uh, Dave Calhoun said yesterday, game changer, how do you think your model taken to sort of its extreme can really, you know, change the industry, you know, change the dynamics and the, fundam the fundamentals of retail, right? What, so what's the, you know, paint me the picture of economic disruption that may be a result of the scale achievable by your technology? Um, sure. Um, I, um, so s some, of the, some of the pieces for what we eventually want to build are, are already in place, and we've been releasing better versions of this over the last few months. Um, so anytime businesses can come and businesses are allowed to come and verify that they own a certain business or they, they own a certain series of businesses all around, all around. And when they come and do that, they're actually exposed and they're given a dashboard of how well, um, of, of customer traffic. So it's basically like a Google Analytics, but for the real world to some degree. So they actually see you know, who comes in, they see how often they come in, they see when their most active days are, uh, what evenings they actually do better. Um, they also have another dashboard where they can come in and, uh, like I said, manage all these different types of specials for their business, you know, specials for offering 50% off of uh, the meal or uh, first round of drinks are free or something like that. Uh, and they basically can see both of these things in the same dashboard. So they can see, you know, how well is a special that I actually announced on Tuesday, how well is that doing? Is that actually driving more customers into my, into my business? Um, are people actually responding well to this? Are they actually bringing new friends? Are they bringing their friends that have never been here before into the establishment? Um, and we're b getting better and better at building these tools. So this would be a sort of a revolution in consumer understanding or in uh, you know, understanding behaviors relative in understanding to behaviors and understanding what people like and understanding, I think, where they go, um, uh, what their tastes are, what they prefer. And you'd be able to see this in, in a very real-time way. So very similar to Google Analytics. You put, up a, you put up a new blog post and you immediately see, you know, do people like it or not, just based on the traffic that comes there alone. So it's very similar to that. You'd be able to respond to it very quickly because you see it in real time. Yeah, terrific. Lee, same question. How are you going to change the world? So I think, uh, <laughs> um, half off. No, I think from a, um, from the consumer standpoint, I th we'll, we'll, we'll bifurcate into two separate questions on that. On the consumer standpoint, we're hoping uh, through our daily deal special, that one product that will continue to deliver and delight and serve you offers that are relevant, that are compelling, that are engaging, that are local. Um, with a new product that we're announcing uh, in early April called Groupon Now, we're hoping to answer the question of I'm bored or I'm hungry. <laughs> so it's 11 o'clock and I'm sitting at my desk and I've got, or I'm sitting at the table and where do I want to go eat? Um, you can simply look at the GPS on your, or the, your, pull out your mobile phone, we know where you are based on the GPS, or you type in your location on the computer, and within five miles or within 10 miles, whatever you want to set, are local deals for you for, for lunch. Uh, or for activities that are around in that area. So hopefully when you walk out of your building, we'll be able to tell you to turn left or turn right. So that's something that we're, we're, we're very fascinated with and something that we think has a lot of runway for us moving forward. From the merchant standpoint, we think that we're gonna be able to fulfill and deliver on the promise of delivering the right offer to the right customer at the right time, albeit on a mobile device or on a PC platform, and become a part of that um, $144 billion local ad advertising business. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to give some deference to the fact that we have a room full of researchers and um, who are hungry for data and, and for consumer insights. New kinds of data are fascinating to researchers. Um, and you both have sort of unique infrastructures that are generating new kinds of data. Can you talk about you know, what you think you can get from this data, new kinds of insights? Um, and you know, will, will, can you make some of this data available for others, or perhaps it belongs to the retailers? So talk about your data, and and you know how uh, the research community is going to get its its uh, hooks into what's now available, if anything. Uh, sure. Um, so um, over the last two years, we've had almost. Um, um, we, we track, uh, obviously, there are many different uh, metrics that we track, but I think the, 
the number one thing is uh, the check-ins. So anytime anyone goes somewhere, you check into the location, and that data point is available both to the user as well as the, the business. So we have this analytics dashboard that shows, as a business, um, you know, how well you're doing, who's coming in, when, it, when is it more um, popular, when is it not. Um, and we make that, all that available as soon as you claim a business. So as soon as you can prove that you own the, the venue or, or you know, a cluster of venues, you're going to be able to see this data immediately. And in the future, what we want to do is obviously get better you know, um, insights into that. You know, where is a person coming from? Where are they more likely to go? Um, uh, what kind of tastes do they have? Um, and we're slowly exposing some of this data. So if you look at Foursquare version 3, which came out about two weeks ago, um, we're actually taking some of this data and making it very um, playful in a different way. We're making it useful for the user. So you can actually go to a, your friend's profile and you can see what do they like to do in a city. Do they like to go to bars? Do they like to go to fancy Italian restaurants? Um, and we're taking the cluster of data or the, all these check-ins that, we, that we've gathered about that user, um, clumping them all together and giving you some insight into who that person is. So very similarly, we'd be able to do this on a bigger scale on the business end of things, too. Excellent. So we provide a pretty robust merchant dashboard as well, so that they're able to measure um, who are their Groupon customers, what are they spending when they come in store, what's their average basket size, what's their overage spend. Uh, we're seeing close to, um, on average, 85% of the Groupon customers that come in into um, people's uh, locations are spending at least 60% above the value of the Groupon, and in restaurants, it's closer to 80 to 83%. And so we're excited about that statistic, and we're excited about that kind of um, data that the merchants are taking full advantage of within their dashboard. We are producing a lot of data right now at scale that we're looking at how we segment, how do we um, help target our own inventory, our own um, offers to, to better activate and to better serve the offers to the right people at the right time. We think there's going to be a lot around purchase-based data. Um, when they hit the buy button, that tells us a lot. When they don't, is that not now or not ever? And what does that mean for the marketer? And how do we think about time-based? How do we think about people being able to raise their hand and say, I, now I'm in the market. Now I want offers on auto or on um, retail or on new cell phone plans or what have you. So we're, we're excited about that self-select targeting and that self-select hand-raising of opportunities and offers that they want to see. Do you um, experiment with anything econometrically? Like the el elasticity would seem to be an, a, you know, an obvious, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're half off or 75% off, um, you know, is it, do you find uh, inflection points in pricing? You know, a, a lot of our retailers are working and a lot of our partners are working at um, the different, they're testing across the board different types of offers. So doing something on a local level versus a national level and having the flexibility to have multiple offers in different locations to test the type of redemption, the type of activation, and the type of customer that you're driving is something that we're working aggressively on right now. Um, you know, a 25 for $50 uh, Groupon towards Lucky Jeans, you know, the, the typical Lucky Jean is $100, so that's not 50% off, that's 25% off. But a 50 for 100, those are t two totally different types of offers in the marketplace. And we're looking to see what redeems the best and what drives the most activation. Yeah, okay, I got um, another couple of questions, but both of you, regarding the future, um, you're both in this you know, hyper, <clears throat> we're using the word hyper a lot today, we've got hyper local, hyper normal growth. Um, what's the next big thing for you? I mean, what's this, you know, is, do you have in your business plan some kind of milestone, not about money, but about functionality? What's the next cool thing I can do with Foursquare, and how's that going to affect your business and what retailers can, can uh, avail themselves of? Well, I think it's um, um, getting better, getting to know our users and our businesses better, using all this data that we're collecting um, in a better way. We had, uh, in the two years that we've been active, we've had more than half a billion check-ins, um, for instance. So it's about using all this data to build even better tools and better software. Um, I briefly mentioned Foursquare 3.0. And that's moving more in that direction, where we take all this great stuff that we know about you and we condense who you are as a person and we kind of show you this automated, it's kind of like a, you know, it's kind of like a baseball card analogy. So you just go to a person's profile and you see who that person is, what they like, where they go, and you'll be able to compare two people or two friends and see, you know, what, how, are they, how are they similar, how are they different? Can we recommend something for both of them to go do? Uh, can we take all of this great data and can we make recommendations about where you should go? So Foursquare 3.0 is a, first pass at doing this, Foursquare 3 has 
this, uh, the system called Explorer, which basically gives you recommendations based on what it knows about you, what it knows about your friends, and it gives you recommendations on where to go. So you'll actually be able to um, go in there and say, you know, I'm hungry, I want to I wanna find a place in Midtown to eat. And it takes what it knows about you and your social graph, and it gives you some pretty decent, some pretty good things about what to do. Um, so I think we're going to see more of that. It's, it's using all this data for good, both on the business side and, and user. Yeah. How about you, Lee? Miles? Yeah, we're, uh, we're designing um, a lot of new products and launching a lot of new things. Uh, right now, currently, we, have, we just launched our home and garden channel uh, within our daily deal section. Um, so we're thinking about categorization and um, following different types of categories for offers and making sure that um, we assimilate the right offers for the right people. Um, we're thinking about the Groupon Now product, which I, I briefly touched on, which is a time-sensitive product that is, has to be bought, redeemed within the same day, between 2 and 5, or 10 and 2, or 6 to 10 type hours. So we're thinking about that um, local, local offer at the right time on the right device for redemption. Um, we also think about designing our platform to really be at the commerce intersection of social, local, and mobile, and where those three trends are going in the future and how our users are currently using our services across those three platforms and how we're going to better design for that in the future. Right. Sounds like you'll have some data to support, you know, theories about holistic, how, how the various media work together. Yes. Um, okay, one last one. We only have a couple of minutes um, left, and, and I'll let either one of you take this. Um, I, speaking just from, uh, on behalf of the audience, um, you know, we, over the last uh, 30 years, uh, we have watched retail change from Main Street to big box in a uh, sea change of, um, you know, retail has completely and utterly changed in the last 30 or 40 years to these gigantic uh, Walmarts and, and big box stores. And uh, there seemed to be, it was a juggernaut, right? I mean, and, and Main Street was shutting down and local retail became sort of a, a, a very tough, tough business. Do you think that what you're doing can start to reverse that trend, can sort of put Main Street back together uh, somehow by uh, enabling the sort of scale effects available to the bigger stores, maybe to the smaller ones? Is there a uh, way that you can bring sort of Main Street America I, back? I mean, to Naveen's point earlier, I think uh, leveling of the playing field yeah. and playing to both the opportunities for Main Street to have a have the opportunity to reach scale, have the right offers at the right time, uh, as well as to the national and providing them another channel yet to engage with their customers. Yeah, I definitely think so. It's the, it's the long tail and we'll, mm -hmm. we're a finally able to build tools that um, give both the big chains the same billboard that the, that the little guys have, right? Because it's all in your hand, it's all on this single, you know, special nearby kind of flag. Um, mm -hmm. And the second thing is for the first time over the last couple of years, users, customers are coming and customers are the ones that are coming into your stores, and customers are the ones that are talking about you and popularizing who you are and talking about it with their friends, either over Twitter or Foursquare or all these other things. It's not the small business that's had to go and advertise and do it the other way. You know? um, so we've kind of changed the model around a little bit. Right, right. OK, well, that's, um, you know, we have only a, a few seconds left. And um, so I guess um, we'll, um, we won't take questions because we had such a short time uh, available to us. So I just want to say on behalf of the audience, um, thank you so much for coming today to talk to us uh, at Rethink. And um, we're really looking forward to watching how you guys progress. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thank you.